what it is, lads and ladettes. It's your boy Dakota Griswold of Gamers, Nerds, and Geeks United. Welcome back to Yesterday Today. This, of course, is the show where I bring you some of the biggest gaming news you may have missed from yesterday, today. And jumping right into the appetizers here. And I'm not the biggest golf fan, but I really thought this was pretty, pretty interesting. So PGA Tour 2K, the first 2K PGA Tour game, they basically they released a commercial out with the Happy Gilmore villain played by Chris McDonald. <laughs> There's a whole commercial with him and some other pro golfers, and of course, The Miz from WWE for some reason. But it is good to see this. This is a funny, funny commercial. He was completely in character, and the Shooter McGavin character, and it was obvious, it was hilarious. He had the little the sweater tied around the neck. He was throwing fits, flipping stuff around and everything. It was it was really, really interesting. And I just thought that this is something that, you know, they, they put a little bit of care into their commercial. And that's, that's pretty awesome. Now, let's get into the next piece. Uh, NVIDIA's GeForce Now, their cloud gaming service by NVIDIA, of course. Well, now you can play that on a Chromebook. Yeah, Chromebooks aren't necessarily known to be gaming beasts, but it's on the cloud, and if you have pretty good internet and a stable with okay specs, you can probably play it. And looking at The Verge, and the the author basically showed that they were playing, of course, with the Switch controller, of course, on the Nintendo Switch Pro controller attached to it. But basically, they play, they were playing Death Stranding for PC on it, and hey, maybe the future is cloud gaming and all digital. I really hope not, but... Everybody's getting in the cloud. Even Apple is even probably getting in the cloud with, with the patent that was recently discovered. It's scary because we got xCloud, Stadia. Ah oh, man. Now when I think about it out loud, it doesn't really look good for people who like physical media like me. They, they can't give steel cases over, over the cloud, right? Absolutely not. And well, Facebook, they are taking it to the next step with VR. As far as, you know, maybe your securities go. Well, basically, Oculus tweeted out the fact that starting later this year, when you sign on to your Oculus, you're going to basically have to sign and connect it to your Facebook account as well. And yeah, I don't think I really like that idea. Here's the official statement from Oculus, and it says, Today we are announcing some important updates to how people log into Oculus devices. While still keeping their VR profile starting in October 2020, everyone using an Oculus device for the first time will need to log in with a Facebook account. That doesn't sound good, because what if people don't have Facebook and they just like to play the game? Maybe they don't want to. Maybe they don't want their privacy, you know, basically taken away. Why do they feel the need to have to do this? And then they also have some other interesting tidbits, and it says, if you're an interesting user and already have an Oculus account, You'll have to you'll have the option to log in to Facebook and merge your Oculus and Facebook accounts. If you are an existing user and choose not to merge your accounts, you could continue using your Oculus account for two years. Doesn't seem like you're getting around this whole Facebook thing. You understand? So yeah, I don't know. I'm not an Oculus user. I'm, I only have one VR and I absolutely love my PS4 VR, but uh Ah, maybe I was actually thinking about getting into Oculus. Any Oculus users that watch this channel, let me know down in the comments below what you think of Oculus in general. And of course, this, with you having to sign into Facebook. Now, moving on, and the people who made, uh, who made Shadow Warrior, the Shadow Warrior series, Flying Wild Hog, well, they're now making a sci-fi multiplayer game, and it actually kind of sounds like Shadow Warrior 2, but in more directly in the multiplayer aspect where it's an action RPG, but it's multiplayer. And we're basically, uh, they didn't say if it was first person or anything, but you know, basically in Shadow Warrior, you, it, it had co-op and you can play with other people and fight and grind and upgrade your abilities where Shadow Warrior 3 and Shadow Warrior 1 weren't exactly like that. So now it seems like, I guess maybe with Shadow Warrior 2, that was just them 
maybe just experimenting to see how far they can go or see how they can do it. And maybe they learn from whatever mistakes that they may have done it. Now I have played Shadow Warrior 2, but did not play the multiplayer aspect of it. But maybe they learned from whatever possible mistakes they did there just to gain some knowledge and some intel. I did not really hear any issues about the multiplayer. Some people just, you know, it was just okay. You know, there was really no serious complaints, but maybe they want to do more and they wanted to see if they knew what they were doing. So I definitely encourage this. If it's not one of those MMO-like games or Destiny-style games, maybe just something multiplayer where you can play co-op or something like that. Yeah, maybe, but then again, it might be a Destiny-style game because who isn't? doing that type of game now, you understand? All right, lads and lattice, let's jump into the meat and potatoes here. Now, this entree was a bit heavier on the appetizer side, but now the main course of meat and potatoes is a bit, it's a bit of a small portion, but oh, so the flavor, it's so juicy right here. And well, first of all, I want to start off with Deathloop. I was just reporting on Deathloop and basically talking about how the game is going to be enhanced. It's gonna be, okay. you know, they wanted to work on it more and there were going to be uh, the multiplayer aspect of it. But well, just as that came out and just yesterday, now we got a delay into 2021, quarter two, 2021 to be exact. Arcane Studios released an official statement. And of course, this is all about COVID-19 and everything like that. Everybody is, you know, this is really delaying a lot of games and maybe a lot of other things. But they said for the health and safety of everybody, you know, and adjusting for us to work at home, we're going to have to just delay the game. And they also said this extra time will allow our team to bring Deathloop, the, the Deathloop world to life with as much character and fun as you've come to expect from our team. And OK, fine. Dishonored was great. Prey was a pretty fun game. It just wasn't for me. A little too slow, but Deathloop seemed to be very promising. And well, can't wait to play that on a PS5 whenever it does come out. Yeah, so, eh, eh, what it is. Another delay out of 2020. We still got some solid games guaranteed to come out. We're still going to be probably playing heavily on the Assassin's Creed Watch Dogs. And of course, Cyberpunk 2077 side. Whether you're playing it on your Xbox One, Xbox Series X, PS4, PS5. A lot of people, mostly everybody, will be on that game. And this will be able to hold us over for the meantime. And of course, you get to go right into that backlog. Now, moving on to the next and final story. It's a juicy one. Of course, the Nintendo World Indie Direct, the Indie World Direct happened. And, well, it's quite interesting. It was quite interesting. And I didn't know what to expect, but I was still really, really impressed. I really appreciate the amount of love that they put into these. And they're really, really enjoyable. So we're going to go over the complete list, basically. We're going to go over the complete list of everything that, that they announced. And even stuff that, that's, that isn't even coming out for a while. Just a little bit of a sizzle reel here. And most of these games also came out. This is funny. Right, right, right away. Like right away. There's four or five games. So let's go. Let's start off with Garden Story. Garden Story is basically one of those top-down Zelda games where you play as a grape. It's an action-adventure game, but there's also village simulation. Of course, you got to put this village together, and, and it's pretty cool, pretty cool. Not for my taste, but it looks not bad at all. Then, of course, we got an indie hit, Subnautica, in the sequel, Subnautica Below Zero. That is coming out later this year, of course, when you landed on any alien planets, and you got to basically be underwater and you got to find stuff and craft stuff to survive on these planets. Now there's a game called Takeshi and Hiroshi and it says another title surprising launch on Switch today. Takeshi and Hiroshi is a game about aspiring game designer Takeshi who is building a side-scrolling action RPG for his younger brother Hiroshi to play. Your goal is to make a game that Hiroshi will only enjoy, but you'll need to make sure it isn't too challenging or he won't be able to beat it. Now, this sounds like a game within a game, and this is exactly what it looked like inside the trailer, and it looked okay. It looked okay. Not my speed, but I like the premise of it. I like the idea of it in an art form, and it's just, you know, probably giving you uh, uh, good lessons that people could bond with their siblings. And, of course, then we have... Raji, Raji, an ancient epic, and it's based off an Indian culture. 
right? And it says, a beautiful action adventure game set in ancient India. Raji, an ancient epic cast, players in the role of a young girl who must battle the demonic forces invading the world and rescue her younger brother. Another sibling game. The game launches on Nintendo Switch today as time console exclusives. One of those games that dropped immediately. Now, I remember seeing this maybe a year or two on one of those Switch Directs, on one of the Nintendo Directs, or maybe the Indie World. I'm not even sure how far back it goes, but it did look familiar as soon as it played up. And I'm definitely going to eventually get this. Maybe get a physical edition for it later on down the line, but I definitely, definitely want to play it. It's one of those top-down kind of Diablo-esque, but it doesn't really seem like it's hyped up as Diablo. It's action adventure, no RPG elements. Uh, at least this is what it says here, but it does seem very, very interesting. Um, and it's also set in Indian mythology. Now, there's another game called Bear and Breakfast. Yeah, you basically play as a bear that makes a bed and breakfast. How could it get better than that? That seems, and you gotta basically manage it. It sounds Animal Crossing-ish, like kind of simulation, kind of stuff that you just, you get to relax and really enjoy where people just go back and, hey, video games are supposed to be fun, time wasters, time killers, whatever you want to say. Hey, Bear and Breakfast, that seems really, really adorable, honestly. Now here's another game called Short Hike. It's an acclaimed indie hit, uh, Short Hike is making its console debut as a time switch exclusive today. You play as Claire, a teen bird, who is camping at Hawk Peak Pro Provincial Park. While awaiting an important phone call, Claire sets off for the mountain's summit to get better reception, meeting and aiding a motley cast of animals on the way. This sounds like one of those point and click adventures, one of those just straight up adventure games. Not bad, actually. You basically just... <laughs> help people pass on and stuff like that. This this is really another one of those cute indie games because they can basically do whatever they want. And there's no publisher saying like, no, you got to do this and do that. No, they're letting them make their game. Now, here's an interesting game, right? It was kind of funny. I like the art style. It's like old English, old French Republic type of stuff. And it's called Card Shark. And here's the synopsis. It says, developed by the studio behind Reigns, King and Queens, Card Shark is a game all about cheating at cards, and it's actually kind of funny. You'll need to master real card tricks and manipulations to move your way up 18th century French society. But you'll need to be careful not to get caught, as the results could prove deadly. Card Sharks is releasing on Nintendo Switch in 2021. This also is coming from GameSpot, and basically... <laughs> You can cheat at cards and they actually show your hand and everything and, you, and they find multiple different ways to cheat. But in this game, if anybody does catch you cheating, they might be prone to try to kill you. Yeah. And, and yep, published by Devolver Digital. It sounds like a Devolver Digital game, something that they would take on. It's actually quite hilarious. Um, yeah. <laughs> and now let's move on to another game. This, this, this game actually excites me because I'm actually playing the second one in the series. And this is Torchlight 3. Now, we all know Torchlight is a Diablo clone and just expect more Diablo-like stuff. I'll give you the official synopsis and I've been waiting, I've been watching this because it was originally called Torchlight something else when they were trying to make it an MMO type thing. But they turned it around and made it a whole regular Torchlight game. That was, and actually kind of fast, I feel like less than a year, but here's the complete synopsis. Following its early access launch earlier this year, the loot-driven dungeon crawler Torchlight 3 is coming to Nintendo Switch this fall. The Switch version will feature an exclusive piece of content, a unique red fairy pet that you'll only be able to get on Nintendo's hybrid console. And then, of course, now we have Manifold Garden. This is a puzzle game. It's vertical. It seems like you... It messes with your mind, basically. It's physics-based. It's a first-person puzzle game. Here is the official synopsis. The stylish first-person puzzle game, Manifold Garden, also arrives on the Nintendo Switch today. The title challenges you to navigate a strange MC Escher-inspired world. Absolutely great way to describe that because I definitely didn't even come up with the words for that. And it says, an impossible structures that stretch before you. Yeah, nah, this game seems quite interesting. And then, of course, we have Evergate. And it's like, it seems like Ori a little bit because this is exactly what I thought it was at first where but it's actually a different twist but you've actually got to, to platform you have have to shoot yourself off of certain little balls of light you know similar to ori's attack 
that he has when he shoots himself and stuff to, you know, get somewhere extra. But this game, you basically only use that to, to, to uh, basically traverse and everything. And it says, Evergate is a 2D side-scrolling adventure game reminiscent of Ori and the Will of the Wisps. As Kai, you'll need to make use of your unique soul flame ability to slow down time and navigate the dreamlike world of the afterlife. Evergate launches on the Nintendo eShop today, and you also get to see memories of you in your past life because you're trying to find your way to peace. But also, what I definitely want to say before I say anything else, Hades. They opened up the show with Hades, made by the same people that made Bastion and Transistor, both indie hits, both very great games, both games that I've bought multiple times for no reason. Hades is a roguelike version of these games. Now, I remember years ago when roguelikes really started becoming a big deal and I just didn't like it, but then certain games started coming out, like Dead Cells, and I just said, oh, okay. And then even cheaper, smaller indie, indie games is coming out, like Rover, it's like less than $5. You play as a robot and you're shooting around and it's just, you go back and forth all the time. I'm actually into it a little bit when it's done. In Hades, you basically play as the prince of the underworld and you're trying to get out of hell. And you just start over every time. And you get this go and open with blessings from each god trying to aid you out of hell and turn you against Hades. Um, this game is fire. It seems very fire. It's coming out this fall and I'm very, very excited. I, when, I, when it was first on PC and only on PC, I said, yeah, what's going on? But it was, they wanted it to be early access and stuff like that. So it's all good. So now uh, uh, in fall, it'll officially be done and I can't wait to play it. I'm not, I'm not letting them get me though. Okay, because after I bought Bastion and Transistor for like $5 each on sale, they purposely, okay, I'm, I'm tired of being treated like this. They purposely brought out physical versions. Okay, now when I become a bigger YouTuber, I'm gonna just start buying that stuff for no reason because I'm a collector, okay? But right now, I ain't big time, but I'm telling you, y'all ain't getting one over on me no more limited run games, limited reserve games, and all of you other ones. We're just, it's just gonna, eight bit dope. Coming out with Untitled Goose Game. This is, ah, oh, but I'm excited. I didn't buy Untitled Goose Game on the Switch, and I'm going to get it. And more on Untitled Goose Game coming next. But first, I want to talk about Spirit Pharaoh. This is an interesting game, and I'm actually very interested in it. I'll just give you the, the synopsis. Spirit Pharaoh is a much anticipated title in which you act as a fairy master for the undead. Speaking of Hades. It's up to you to manage your boat, explore, and carry souls into the next life. It could be heavy stuff, but, but developer Thunder Lotus Games hopes that players will find some solace in it. Read more. You could read more. And so, uh, basically, you're helping people finish, you know, basically do their unfinished business, and they could just move, move on and go to the next life. That It actually seems very, very interesting. It might be a sense of tranquility in it. And yeah, it looked really, really interesting. So I, eventually I'm gonna definitely pick it up and I'm really, 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 really curious to hear what all the reviewers say about it. And I, I'm gonna definitely do my research on this one. But now there's some other highlights they did in a quick sizzle reel. Haven, to my knowledge, that's that game where you play as a couple and they're floating and skating around. And it's actually a, 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 a turn-based RPG game where and their lovers, they, they can jump in front of one another to protect the other. It's kind of cool. Going Under, uh, that's coming out September 24th. And of course, Haven is coming out later this year. The Red Lantern is coming out later this year. Unrailed is coming out September 23rd with a demo available today. Well, yesterday. Struggling uh, August 27th. In most, a game that I saw on there two years ago, maybe. It's a side-scrolling kind of... How do I explain the art style? It's kind of gloomy, kind of like ghost. I can't really, can't really explain it. But that's coming out August 21st, very, very soon. It's two, a week? It's about a week. Actually, no, not even a week, a few days. It'll be out next Wednesday or Thursday, I want to say. And she Dreams Elsewhere that's coming out early next year. Grindstone is coming out fall of this year. And Goner 2, another roguelike, speaking of roguelikes, right? But here's the real show of is the real star of the show. Untitled Goose Game. This is one of those one more thing type deals here. Untitled Goose Game. If you've played it already, you absolutely loved it, right? Now, why wouldn't you like to play this with a partner? 
Could you only imagine that? And they and they and they have they distinguish the difference between two, where basically you see the regular goose, he looks regular, but then there's one with you know his, his horn, his uh, beak kind of goes up like that. I, I'm not really a specialist on ducks, but yeah, his beak looks a little different, so you can really tell the difference. You can go around terrorizing the town together. And then they also said, coming soon, physical edition. That physical edition is so beautiful. It's such a wonderfully beautiful blue. I can't wait to have it in my hands. I purposely did not buy it on Nintendo Switch because I knew they was gonna do this to me. I don't care if I had to wait almost a whole year. So what? I played some of it on my Xbox Game Pass. That game is very fun. I love the music. It's relaxing, it's hilarious. Now to play that with co-op with somebody that's willing to to tolerate my nonsense and entertain it, <laughs> maybe we'll be best friends. But lads and ladders, thank you so much for watching. This video was a long one. Eh, a bit heavy on the appetizer, five, appetizer side, but I told you it was really, really juicy on the main course, the meat and potatoes. But go ahead, if you like this, hit the like button. It really helps out. If not, hit the dislike. It's all good. No beef. If you're new here, subscribe and scroll up to all so you know when your boy's posting. Let me know now in the comments below about everything I discussed here, what you thought about this Indie World Direct, and what you think about Deathloop, Deathloop getting delayed and Shadow Warrior making this multiplayer action adventure game. Co-op, you know, I, that's really, really what I want. But lads and ladders, thank you so much for watching. Share this with your mother, your sister, your aunt, your uncle, your sister's cat, and whoever can watch this and cares about video game news. This video is for me.